Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. And we welcome to the studio for the first time <laughs> ever. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for having me. Oh my leg. Yo. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, uh, I'm fine. I'm okay. Just uh, okay? Just okay. Why? As usual. No, I'm great. I'm sweet. I'm amazing. I'm blessed. Everything. By the way, like you could just be okay and still be blessed and all those things. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, of course. A lot of music to discuss. A lot of life to get into. Mm. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, so the thing is, it's been a, it's been a long time since I did a podcast. I was going say a long time. It's been a minute since I've done an interview. Um, so this is just, and it's been a long time too since I've been in LA. So this is just, I, I'm just taking the time to <sighs> settle in. Settle in, yeah. It's a different lifestyle than. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like the life out here is a bit faster. It's just like, you know, it's just a bit faster than Lagos than uh, what like London. You know, London is fast, but like, this is very. This is an another another level. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of love it out here. I love the weather, especially the sunsets. Can we talk about the creative energy difference between cities? So the thing is, I haven't I haven't created as much in in Los Angeles as I have done in London. Um, but the energy, the creative energy in London is amazing, especially at the first time when you get there. Um, as soon as I got to London, I made a song called Holy Ghost. The first week I got to London, the first week I started staying in London, uh, I I made Holy Ghost, and. It's just been like that. Of course, over time, you know, you just get tired of the environment because it's really, as much as, you know, it's London, but it's not so much in London. It's like, it's just a city without, you know, like in LA, you can like go to the beach and easily, but like London, it feels like everybody's in a box and stuff. But mm. yeah, it's, it moves. The energy in London, creative energy in London is it's amazing, especially when you, the first times, first like say one week or something or two weeks or a month it's amazing but you attribute that song to this new style of afro beats that you're creating yeah holy ghost holy ghost is a is a is a new movement i was going to i was going to make the whole album with the new um uh, with the new sound but uh al- along the line i I changed, I switched my, changed my mind and I decided to, I, I shared an idea with a certain artist and the artist went ahead and put out an album with my idea and I had to go back and record my album. Wait, what? Wait, oh, huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait. So um, I had this idea to, to do something with the sound and he came to me and asked me, and this is an artist that I love for sure, and I decided to, yeah, okay, let's collaborate. Look at where I'm heading with Afrobeat. I think this is the way. And then five months later, he put out an album with exactly all the same sound that I shared with him. You see? So um, I had to go back and remake my album, which is actually going to be the greatest album of all time in Afrobeat history. Okay. Yeah. Okay. By, by the way, like, okay. <laughs> some of the greatest pieces of art or inventions are born out of situations like this. Totally. Yeah. Because you're pushed and you're forced and you're kind of pressured to do something. Greatness yeah. comes from those situations. Yeah. Um. I, I like I like moments like this because it just it makes me it makes things come out. You know, it just makes every every other thing. I mean. This is a this is definitely something I never wanted to talk about, but I I just I just it's just been there in my in my mind and like I'm 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 pissed about the fact that I was I was very human enough to had to share an idea, uh, and and it happened the way it happened. But yeah, I'm making the greatest album, the greatest album, the greatest Afrobeat album of all time, and um. It's coming. So do you actually reach a, a clarity of mind from making this album or before you make it? I reach clarity of mind um, before making this album. Uh, 
I reached Clarity of Mind before making this album. I found Clarity of Mind while making my first album, which was called Boy Alone. So, uh, yeah. From Boy Alone, I got Clarity of Mind. Of course, solitude is what gives you clarity of mind yeah. most of the times. Um, so, yeah. I found Clarity of Mind making Boy Alone, maybe after making Boy Alone. And it was supposed to be my third album. It's now my second album. So you're making two at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because you're always creating. Yeah, I'm always creating. Uh, I'm always creating that. I feel like that is that is my purpose. That's like that's what gives me confidence. When did you realize it gives you confidence? Was it when you were producing for other people back in the day, or a part of your your rap group? I mean, it's one of the things that gives me confidence. Not the thing that gives me confidence. It's just one of those things that gives me confidence. Just to have an idea in your head and go to the studio and then watch it form and then you bring something to life and you put it out to the world and everybody's dancing to it just the way you imagined it. It's something to think you are not just a human, you know? Yeah. I get that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's very amazing. How does this session begin for you? Do you go in with a sound in your head? Do you go with a lyric? Like, well, how does it start? It's, it's very flexible. It comes, it goes. It's like anyhow, sometimes I get in the studio with other artists and you do something. Sometimes you sleep in at night and you get an idea and you go to the studio. It just, it happens any, any way it does. But do you hear it in your head? Do you see it? Like, how does it work for you? You hear it in your head and then you see it. Then you visualize it. What are you visualizing? You visualize the people dancing. So do you, will you play the instruments yourself in a, in a studio or do you? No, I don't, I don't play any instruments. You instruct? Yeah, I just, yeah, maybe, maybe the piano, maybe the, the guitar, just very little of, jack of everything, you know. Um, yeah. What does it mean to like evolutionize Afrobeats? Make Afrobeats relevant? I mean, it's highly relevant today. It's one of the most relevant genres in the world. Yeah, it is. But I also believe that people are messing it up. I also believe that it's becoming very commercial, which of course is what we want. We want the world to listen to Afrobeats, but I feel like there's just too much money in people's faces these days and the artists are just like, Afrobeat artists are just trying to grab the money, just the money. And I think the best thing that I can do as an artist is to give back at least maybe to Afrobeats, you know? Just make the music, at least the music feel me make the art um yeah but i also have my fear for afrobeat of course we want afrobeats to the world uh that's that's the whole mission afrobeats to the world which is happening right now the whole world is vibing to afrobeat and dancing to afrobeat but uh, at the same time i feel like um the pioneers of afrobeat are are just all over the place right now and not really making afro beats anymore it's just you know so what is the balance between keeping afro beats pure and exactly the way it's always been i mean it's just to give it essence most of it's just to give it essence just to give it life you know you shouldn't be something that people just dance to you know when you go to the club you just dance you know it should be something it should be what like when you listen to Bob Marley, of course you dance, right? Lucky Dubé. But you need lyrical integrity, right? Yeah, but you, you, there's something that they say to you that's like, oh, wow. You go back and you listen, you know? Even in the records that you're mentioning from Bob Marley, like the ones that you're dancing to are the most impactful and powerful if you listen Bro, to the lyrics. Let's talk about hip-hop. Tupac. I'm going yeah, back. Totally. I'm going back, yeah? The big hip-hop. Right? You, listen, you listen to it and it's like boom, boom, boom. But like you're listening to something. You're listening to somebody talk about your life. Somebody's capturing your life totally. in those in those lines, in those drops. Somebody's actually telling you something that is something, you know. Um, I feel like that is one thing that's missing right now in Afrobeats. No, you need a story. But you need a story, you know. And that's I think well, that's one thing that is that is missing right now in the genre. So are you writing from a place of reality or imagination? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to be the one who's like, oh, I'm the one, you know, I'm, well, the, you, I'm mean, the one saving up from it. Yeah, my, yeah, this is what it is. You're writing lyrics. I'm writing lyrics. I'm writing my own lyrics. Um, of course, there are a lot of amazing Afrobeat artists that are doing very, very awesome. 
like when you listen to the songs and you listen to see the artists and it's like oh cool and you just wish more for them you just wish that oh that it could that it could get you know the bag and stuff and that way afro be to be in safe hands but right now i don't believe that it's in safe hands you know yeah, but you're 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 a pair of the hands i know i am I'm not a saint, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a saint, you know. I'm going for the bag too, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, but you can do that with integrity and still tell a story. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, that's a difference. That's that's that is what is and different about me. I'm, I'm, I definitely care about the arts. I I care about it so much. It's important. It's very important. It's what brought us this far. It's the art. It was it was what started the whole thing. The arts was the love for the art was the thing. And I don't think that should ever change. Hello, beautiful human. Every year, millions of gamers experience IGSS, inadequate gaming setup syndrome. Luckily, a cure has been found. You have to go beyond. With the Vibersonic Mattress by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six built-in subwoofers, USB ports for charging, LED lights so you never stub your toe. It gives you an acoustic massage when you want it, plus adjustable degrees of comfort. This right here is the best way to game ever. Hear your IGSS today at beyondsleeptech.com. If you were to just talk to somebody who has no idea, like, really what Afrobeats is, but they've definitely heard it before, but doesn't know what the genre really is comprised of, what would you tell them? It's music, you know. I'm not just going to say Afrobeats. I'm going to say African music in general. It's like, but Afrobeats precisely, it's like, it's music. It's elements of of what a lot of sounds local sound traditional sounds and then t talking of afro beats and you want to mention you will have to mention fela kuti because you know um the whole story of fela kuti everything fela kuti stood for and like oh wow earthquake that's that an, an earthquake? earthquake whoa oh whoa that was a strong one holy shit that it's... is so Wait, weird. I, I have never seen an earthquake. Me I have never witnessed it. Usually you can't film in this building because it's so secure. That's wild. That is crazy. Something must have happened. That's an earthquake. You can still feel it rumbling. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yo. Wait, that's a first. That was a, Wait, that was what a, the fuck? That was a big one. Everybody okay? Everybody in the other room good? Wait, can they hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, good. I think we're good. Is everybody okay? Bro. Is that your first earthquake? Yeah, that's my that was my first. I mean, that's like the first I mean that was huge. Yeah, usually <laughs> when there's earthquakes, we don't feel them in here. Oh my god. Wait, I'm like afraid to like walk out of the, of the building. You know what I mean? Like the whole building yeah, where the other one's <laughs> it's like no, I'm scared. Yeah, that was that was scary. That was scary. <laughs> is everything okay out there? Everything was good out there. Holy uh, shit. Something wow. must have collapsed somewhere or something. You know, that was really big. Yeah. That was a first for the both of us. It was nice to share that moment with you. Bonding, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sweating, eh? <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Uh wait, where were we? <laughs> I don't know. That was distracting. <laughs> that was crazy. Any who's you. You were describing Afrobeats to the world if somebody hadn't heard before. Mm. Um, what would I? What would I? What would I tell somebody who haven't heard Afrobeats before? It's a vibe. It's a, it's feel good music. It's it's uh, it's it's nothing like anything that the world I've been listening to. It's very. It's something else. It's something else that I think everybody have to like, you know, just dig into, you know, just spend time and listen. It's a vibe. It's it's really it's something else. Moving. That's essentially gonna be the first single off this brand new album, correct? Second. Second. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost was the first. Mm hmm Moving is the second. Moving is the next single off of the album. Second single. And um yeah, it's coming pretty soon. Can you tell me the story behind Lay? Is it true that you add that, like, in your culture, you add that to people's names? And yeah. that is like. Yeah, like, if I want to say Zach, say Zach Lay. 
That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, he's cool, right? <laughs> How does that apply to? Because it's like you're you're calling them from a distance, right? Yeah, you're calling them from a distance. That's like um, when when somebody is like beyond where your eyes can see or something like just far away. You just all they need to hear is your voice, you know, to know that you're calling them. So once they hear you, you screaming, "Lay!" It doesn't matter what you put. So if like Zach Lay, you just wanted to hear your voice. So it's like that's how that's how the the lay came out came out from. How does that apply to your fans and your name? I mean, you want, I mean, they're calling Honestly, you from a distance. I don't know. It just sounds cool, you know. <laughs> and I decided to put it, put it there. <laughs> it just sounded cool, like Omale. Okay, cool. And that's what my grandma used to call me. And so, okay, yeah, makes sense. Omale. Your grandma used to say that, and yet I you... mean, she used to scream Omale you know, <laughs> all the time. So, yeah. And your yeah. debut EP was called Boy Alone. Oh, get laid. Get EP. Laid. Yeah, get laid. EP. Yeah. That was in twenty twenty during the COVID. You, I mean, a couple of VPs. And then, like, I also read that you were talking about, like, people think you came up during COVID. But the reality of the situation was you were making music way before. Yeah, I was making music way before. Like, you were um, a producer. I, well, there was one point where you were you were the artist, then you were the producer, and then you were the artist again, correct? Yeah, fact. Like, um, you, you've gone, you've done it all. No, fact, fact, fact. Uh, I started off as a producer. I think everybody knows this story already. I started off as a producer, then I started, um, I started writing for people, for other artists. Then I started singing. I mean, I started singing first. No, I started rapping first. I was a rapper first, and then I started producing, and then started writing, and then I went back to singing. And 2019, I put out for first the first song, uh, "Do Not Stop." Then "Hello, Brother." And then 2020, I put out Get Laid, and that was where the whole thing started. What made you take a, another crack at it? What pushed you back into it? Uh, just, uh, first of all, one of the reasons why I decided to stop rapping was because of the fact that, I mean, just looking at my roots, rap doesn't seem like what I should be doing, you know? Just looking back at where I came from and where I come from, rap just didn't seem like it for me, you know. I knew I listened to a lot of Tupac and Kendrick Lamar, Drake and stuff when I was growing up. So it just kind of influenced my my thought process. But like I I grew up and I realized that I'm actually an African kid, not just an African kid, a kid from Nigeria, from Port Harcourt, where it's like yeah, this is the music that we make. Is kum kum play. It's not shouldn't shouldn't be hip hop. I mean, of course, hip hop is nice. We love it when we see when we hear it from Tupac and and the likes. But it's just not. It's just not. You know, it's not. It's not original. If I'm doing hip hop, if I'm doing rap, so yeah, I started singing. I started making Afro beats. Boy alone. Beautiful. Thank you. It's a, I mean, dude, it's an emotional record, right? It's an like emotional album. Yeah, it is. It it explores isolation, explores mm -hmm. finding yourself through. That's where I found clarity of mind. Yeah, by being alone. Yeah, by being alone. And what from that body of work do you take with you and apply to your creative process moving forward? Like I said, I'm an artist. Artist. I just, yeah, I'm an artist. Artist, and um. You just need, you just need a bit of time to breathe, you know, time for your mind to relax, for you to be able to know what is really happening around you, you feel me? You need, um, and that was the whole idea for Boy Alone. That was the whole thing for Boy Alone. And I still carry that thing, that thing of just solitude, that thing of, always searching for a space to be free, you know? Just like looking for that that moment to be free. That's why most of my records were done by myself, produced by myself. A lot of my records were produced by myself, recorded by myself. Some were engineered by myself. I just like that space where I can be free enough, where nobody's influencing my creativity and... Um, I think that is one thing that I carry. I've carried from Boy Alone down to 
clarity of mind. I'm just always looking for freedom, you know. Freedom in what sense? Freedom in the sense of like freedom enough to express how it really is. You know, like freedom enough to not be afraid to say the truth for what it is. How do you know when a song is done? I don't know. I just make it and sometimes people say it's not done, but I put it out like that and the whole world likes it. <laughs> it's never done, you know? It's never done. But you know, like something inside of you is telling you to just stop working on it. Yeah, there's just that point where you'd be like, stop, it's enough. I mean, there's always a time when you know that, okay, this record is done. There's nothing, nothing should be added. But mm. like, it's never done. Can work on a record forever. It's never done. There's always something to, you know, tweak. There's always something to make better. So it's just the artist, it's just your decision to like let go and say, okay, cool. Let's call it a wrap. But it's never done if you look at it. And Why did you move from Nigeria to London in the first place? I didn't you... move to London. You didn't? I didn't move to London. I just spent time in London. I didn't move to London. Um... I just spend more time in London because I have to, I had to um, record this new album and I just wanted a new space to record the new album. But like, I didn't move to London, move to London. I still live in Nigeria. I just spend more time in London just because of this album. Does being in London influence the sound of the music you're making today compared to when you make music in Nigeria? It definitely does. Environment definitely does influence. Um, influence what what you do what you see every day the people you interact with the things you you know definitely would want to make you speak more english in your records <laughs> 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 definitely will uh, but that's one thing that i'm very conscious of it's like yeah i i know for sure what my what my what my strengths are you know so yeah, it has its influence, but I need a bit of that. You know, I just, I just don't want to keep doing the same thing all over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What story are you telling with this album that's on the way? Clarity of mind. That's all you need. That's it? That's all you need. Clarity of mind. It's the greatest gift of all time. It's true. Isn't it? I hear you're a good cook. I mean, money. Money is oh. very good but like you know but can you get money without clarity of mind i mean people have money without clarity of mind but you definitely need clarity of mind you definitely do need it how do you know when you have it you know you, you feel it <laughs> interesting <laughs> you okay. feel it <laughs> did you feel like you had clarity of mind as a child or is that only as you become successful as an adult he had it after the album or the, well boil on yeah yeah but you have no worries sometimes do you oh, think you have clarity of mind no. You don't have clarity of mind? No way. I think I think way too much and there's always things going on. Yeah, that that, 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 is, that is me actually. Used to be me. Yeah. Still me. But yeah, that's why I'm making clarity of mind now. Yeah, there's just, there's just too, too much happening right now. By the way, clarity of mind can also be fleeting. It's not like an always on thing. Yeah, but just imagine if you have it all the time. Oh, oh shit, that'd yeah. be nice. That would be very nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as the album is out, you're going to have it all the time. You can listen to <laughs> all of his music. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. Are you genuinely a good cook? A good cook? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a very good cook when it comes to what I'm eating, not for other people. Yeah, you can cook for yourself. I can cook what I like, what I eat, but not, not for you, <laughs> not for any other person. I got it. You know, you did say in an interview a couple months ago that you have been single forever. Is that true? Yeah, that's, that's clarity of mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is clarity of mind, definitely. Of you really should listen to all of Omelay's music, though. It's definitely worth your ears. It's really incredible stuff. And really, I mean, Afrobeat is becoming more and more mainstream with every passing second of every day. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, yeah Afrobeat is... Is is I think this is still like what the start of the whole thing. Um, this is just like what three years or four years of Afrobeat coming out like this. 
so even up to even even up to four years since Afrobeat became this big. And she said, like, what, four years of what? So the genre still has, like, a long time to to grow. So this is still, like, the grassroots of the whole Afrobeat the world movement. Can't even imagine what it is going to be in 10 years. <laughs> Crazy. Mm. What was it like working with Justin Bieber? It was awesome. It's awesome. It's an amazing person, credible personality. What's that, what's that process like? Because it was you and somebody else, right, on the Attention Remix? Or on attention, I'm sorry. Uh no, it was uh, it was me. Then he he came in, and uh, yeah, then we made the record. Uh, started working on it, and then he heard it, and decided to jump on it. How does he hear it? What's the story? I sent it to him. <laughs> That's the lore. You were just like this. Fits. Uh, actually, I and have started working on it, and uh, before that, I and Justin was already talking, you know, on IG and stuff. So, um. Have sent have is his producer, so have sent him the record. He loved it, and he was like, "Let's let's go," <laughs> and that was it. Validating, right? On my first album, I had Justin Bieber. Some that's something else. How do you top that? On this on this album, or is it something that you don't care to do? Actually, I don't care. I don't care topping that. Um, and I, I, the thing is, I don't see that as, as a height, you know, I just see it as a moment of life. You know, it's not like a height that you have to top and shit like that. Yeah, it was just like, it was, it was a moment. It was a very beautiful moment. And then moments come and goes, you know, it's, moments don't stay forever. So you, you don't, you don't, I don't think I want to start chasing a moment that's going to top this other moment. You know? Can you tell me the story behind moving? Uh, moving is just another song, honestly. It's just another song of mine uh, that tells a story of Omale and tells a story of freedom, which is basically all I'm about, freedom. The song I'm talking about, let's take this time together, I leave confirmations, I've been moving. It's about me not having time. It's about me being on this mission of wanting to be free and just... You know, um, yeah, and that's moving. It's like an uplifting record. It's me wanting to move from Boy Alone, where I was all, I'm a mess, so, so take my pain, and like just move into something else. Mm. And I just, and I think that is one thing too that everybody, everybody's looking for. Everybody wants to move, no totally. matter where you are, you know. Transition in the story. Mm hmm. Wondering, who do you make music for? You or for other people? Me, mostly. Uh, me, mostly. That's why I don't really care what every other person's opinion is about my music. I do care. I do care, of course. But mostly it's about me. I want to listen to a record and feel like, wow, this is telling my story. And then, and then everybody else can can take a bit of it if they want to. You know, beautiful. What was life like growing up in Nigeria? Um, it's just really beautiful growing up in Nigeria, where you have you have less. So now that I have more, I I can use my more more than people that have always had this more. You know, yeah. It makes you very strong and very unique. How proud are your parents? My mom, my mom is very proud. She knows I love her so much. Um, and she loves me so much too. And she is my fuel. Her love for me is my fuel. And I just look back at her and everything and how far we've come. And it's just like, the energy just doesn't die. Especially like just looking at my mom in the face and like, okay, cool, we move. Yeah, she's very proud of me. She trusts me. She trusts my decision. She trusts I'm going to be a very, very awesome human being. And uh, that just keeps me going. It's motivating. Yeah, it's very motivating. Your dad played the drums, right? And your grandpa was in a band too? Uh, yeah, my dad played the drum. Not not professionally. He played the drum on, on what? The chairs. On... <laughs> 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 and in the on the dining, you know, on the plates and stuff. 
Yeah, but my granddad used to be a percussionist. He played uh he played for some very high legendary high life singers in his days. And I think that is part of where my whole music thing came from. And just growing up and realizing that your dad was a your granddad was a percussionist for Celestine Oku, who my dad used mm-hmm. to always listen to while when I was young. It's just like it's another validating fact that I I was born a musician. Yeah, you're meant to do this. Yeah, I was meant to do this, yeah. That is the biggest thing, like meant to do this versus like wanting to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wanting to do it and then meant to do it. It's just two this whole is a whole it's two different things entirely. Mm-hmm. Of course people who want to do it still can do it. You don't necessarily need to be meant to do it to start doing it. And of course, anybody can be very good at whatever they want to do, whatever at all. Um, so this is not me saying you have to be meant to do it. You have to feel like you were meant to do it for you to actually do it. No, you can actually just do whatever and be very great at it. It's true. Am I contradicting? I don't know. I mean, no, 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 not at all. Because you can want to do something and master something. Mm -hmm. But feeling like you're meant to do something is different. Like, you're called to it. There's nothing else that one can do. Yeah, but, but, you know, that thing is one, that feeling is, it's rare. You know, it's rare. And you keep waiting for that and nothing happens. Sometimes you just have to start. You just have to try. Oh, totally. Just start. Move. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you guys for having me today. Yeah, anytime, man. Clarity of mind on the way when you're, when it's here. It's going to be waiting for you on Amazon Music, Omelay's artist page, so link below to join it. Really, thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you for having me. It was awesome. <laughs> I feel like I I feel like I said too much. No. Nah. <laughs> when I was right like, oh, should I say this? No. No, a certain artist took my stuff. This is a good, I mean, we also experienced our first earthquake. That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a story. Yeah, my hands are sweating. That's a story. Thanks for being here. Appreciate I thank you guys for having me, man. I do have one quick question now that you re-mentioned that. Did you have the entire album done and you scrapped it and restarted? Or did you kind of rework those songs? Um, so, the thing is, I just scrapped a lot of songs on the album. And um, I just, like... It wasn't the whole album, uh, if, I'm, if I'm meant to be precise and very honest. It wasn't the whole album that was uh, that was scrapped. It was a bunch of songs on the album that was scrapped because, yeah. Well, now we're going to have the greatest Afrobeats album of all time. Yeah, the greatest Afrobeats album of all time. Clarity of mind on the way. Clarity of mind. Omolay, That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it.